Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my Vinyl TV channel. This video is kind of a part two of a series I've been doing on getting you started with a turntable and with vinyl. Last video we talked about buying a turntable. This time you've got your turntable, now you've got to set it up. There's lots of videos on YouTube and information online about how to do this and I'm, I'm just going to give you my two cents worth so that you can have lots of information and do the best job you can because setting up your turntable is so important it's it's more important than you think okay now I have my turntable set on my workbench here this is not the ideal place for me to be playing records of course I know that but just because I got better lighting here it'll be a lot easier for me to show you um, how to do it now not all turntables are exactly the same um, most turntables that have adjustments on them will have the same adjustments that this one does. Um, so if you bought a turntable that has the ability to adjust the stylus pressure and change head shells and all that kind of stuff, uh, or at least change cartridges, then you're going to need to know how to do these things properly um, so that they're, everything's aligned. You have to remember that this is, this is a very, very sensitive instrument. And it's, it's doing things that are so intricate and microscopic and if you're not lined up just properly and things aren't set just right, there can be distortion and there can be bad results. So spending a couple of hours lining up your turntable, even if you got your turntable and they tell you that it's already done, don't trust them. Do it yourself. Okay? So let's get started. Get yourself a level. Get your turntable on a solid surface. Something that's, you know, rugged, um, stable. All right? Don't put it on a TV tray, please. Okay? All right? Get something good. A good shelf. All right? And then once you've got that, get yourself a level. Um, and it's easy to do. Just level it. So you put it on here. You put it on the platter, leveling it from side to side. And of course, mine isn't perfectly level, so I'm going to have to put something underneath the legs here and on this side of the turntable to bring it level. And if you have a turntable that has adjustable feet, you're all set. You could also do it to the shelf. You could level the shelf. And of course, you could do it in such a way that you could cut little circles and put them underneath here so no one will see them, right? So you can do it in a very neat fashion. And then you want to do the same thing from back to front. Okay? And so I'm looking at mine right now. And of course, you guys can probably see that. It's way, way off. I would have to raise the back quite a bit. Let me just do that. You see? To bring it level my, work, my workbench isn't level so it's it's that's that's why so that's what you'd have to do now once you do that you might want to come back and check this one again because you got four corners here you might have to shim up one corner more than the other you know and then the final test and this is the most important one is from the center post to the stylus where your stylus is going to be tracking the record that has to be level if that isn't level you got to start over you got to get it so that this is level that's the most important part you don't want it to be leaning one way or the other okay you want it to be evenly tracking both sides of the groove what's the next thing well you may or may not have to attach your cartridge to the head shell or to the tone arm, if you have a turntable that just has the tone arm with the little screw holes in it, you put the cartridge straight onto the tone arm. Either way, you're going to have to install the cartridge. And even if your turntable came with it pre-installed, don't trust it. Always do your own alignments. Okay, so the cartridge alignment is important. But before you can do that, you have to try and set the stylus pressure. That is how much, you know, weight is on the stylus when it's tracking the record. Let's zoom in the camera and I'll show you how to do this. What you're looking at here is the back of the tone arm um, where there's a weight. This weight actually comes off and if you, when you buy your turntable, it might actually need to be installed. So go ahead and do that. This weight has two parts to it. It has the actual weight itself. You can see that it all turns at the same time. And then it's got this front part, which turns separately, as you can see. Okay, and that's going to allow us to calibrate the tone arm. 
All right, so don't worry where all these things are right now. What we're going to do first is balance the tone arm. So what you're trying to do here is you're trying to create a zero tracking force, which means that the tone arm will be completely balanced. Okay, and as you can see right now, it's not balanced. It's abs actually um, heavy. You have to remember to exercise extreme caution while you're doing this. You have to remove the stylus guard if it comes off. If yours doesn't come off, then don't worry about it. Unplug your turntable. Make sure it's not going to turn on or start turning or spinning when this is going on because you could, again, you could damage your stylus. So what are we going to do? We're going to balance the tone arm. So we turn the weight at the back. Oh, okay, so we've gone too far, right? So we'll go back a little bit. And you're turning the back of the weight, not the front part that turns separately. The back of the weight is what you want to, the actual weight itself. Okay, so I'm going to, and also make sure your cue level, your lever is down and you can get a good representation. Also want to set your, your anti-skating to zero so that it doesn't move around. And that's pretty good. I think I can do a little better than that. Let me just see. Now it's balanced, okay? Now we move to the next step. The next thing you want to do is clamp your tone arm down so it doesn't move around. Now that the tone arm has been balanced, what we want to do is calibrate. Don't turn the weight itself. Just turn this little ring on the front. Bring it down to zero. And I'm going to actually get up close and look, make sure it's at zero because it's hard to see through the camera. And there it is at zero. So basically you've calibrated the tone arm. And so now you have to know the tracking force of your cartridge. So let's say this cartridge, I think they recommend somewhere around two grams. There's usually a range. Um, briefly, we should talk about this. Sometimes they'll say anywhere between 1.5 and 2.5 grams or between 1.3 and 1.8, something like that. I would aim for somewhere in the middle to start with. So if it's 1.5 to 2.5, we're going to put it at 2. So let's adjust this to 2 grams. Okay, so with the tone arm balanced and this front ring set to 0 like it is, we turn the counterweight up to 2 grams. And there it is. Don't touch the front part. Now that's already set and calibrated. Just use the back part, set it to 2 grams, and there you go. Okay, so now we're going to be able to unlock the tone arm and we'll be able to see that in fact, yes, it is, there is some weight on it. Now, as careful as I was doing that and you saw me do it, I'm going to check it with an accurate stylus gauge. Uh, this has been calibrated, so I know it's accurate. We got it set to two grams. Let's see what this thing says. Haha, 2.4. Okay, the message here, guys, do yourself a favor, get yourself an accurate stylus pressure gauge because these little guys aren't always perfect. Now, the next thing you have to do is the anti-skating control. Well, what is anti-skating? Well, let me ju just give you a brief description of it. As the record goes around and as the stylus tracks the record, there's a natural uh, universal force. When the stylus is following a groove like that and the platter is rotating, there's a natural tendency for the stylus to want to go into the center. This is not the same as centrifugal force. Normally, if you put something on this here, like this remote, and you spin it, I won't do it, I don't want to ruin my style, but you spin it around, this, this will fall off. It will fly off this way, out, outwards. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about that it has a tendency to want to go inward. So if you put a record on here with no grooves on it, and you put this down, it's going to go to the center. There's a counteraction to that, and that's called anti-skate. So if it wants to skate into the middle, you want to anti-skate it. This turntable has a control called anti-skating. It's right beside the uh, tone arm pivot. 
And the rule of thumb, just to be in simple and quick about this, is to set the anti-skating to the same as the stylus pressure, which I've just done. So I've set it to two. However, not all anti-skating mechanisms are the same and they don't all do the same job. They're not very accurate, especially on lower end turntables. So you should probably do some experiments yourself. Now, um, there's a portion of the vinyl community that will tell you to try and find a record that has no grooves on one side. So a lot of imports, a lot of hip hop records that don't have only one side recorded on, the other side's blank. And you can use it to set your, your stylus down on the record while it's turning and watch which way it goes. That's all well and good, except that it's different when it's riding a groove. And um, the, when there's modulation in the groove, this all can play into this. So I don't necessarily believe that that's the best way to do it. This is controversial and you can try it all the ways you want, but I think it's safe to say that if you just set it to what the tracking force is at, and then rely on your ears when you get this all set up to uh, determine whether it's set up properly. If you're playing a record and there's high frequencies like symbols or S's and it's distorted in one side and not in the other, then you might want to try adjusting the anti-skating to see if there's, because what happens is when the style is, is tracking inside the groove, if it's tracking heavier on one side than on the other, then you can get differences and you can get distortion in one side and not the other uh, on the high frequencies especially which is called splatter so if that happens to you check your anti-skating settings and see if you know adjusting it makes any difference the third thing we have to do is align the cartridge and this is so important even on a turntable that comes with the thing that says it's already done don't trust it do it yourself here's how so before you can do this last very important step, I want you to remember a couple of things. Your stylus pressure is still approximate. And there's going to be things that you're going to be doing next that are going to change it slightly. So you're going to be going back to that. Here we have a phono cartridge. Okay. And most of the head shells that you can get have a, a range of places where you can actually mount the cartridge. So, you know, what do you do? You you, you mount the cartridge in there, you connect the little wires, it's a pain in the butt, it takes a little bit of time, get yourself a nice, large, clean area with lots of light, get yourself a beer or a coffee, whatever it is you prefer, and take some time to do this properly. Um, it can take a while. By the way, make sure the wiring is correct. Make sure you've got left and right, ground and main, you know, make sure you follow the instructions um, with the head shell and the cartridge so that the wiring is the right way because if the wiring is wrong the sound is wrong period there's left and right and there's positive and negative so you have to get those right there's four wires I can't do it for you because I've already done this one and I'm not going to take this apart and do it again um, most cartridges have markings on them and you can find lots of images on Google. Just do a search for cartridge wiring, phono cartridge wiring, and do images, and you'll see it. It's very simple, okay? If you have any questions about it, of course, post down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. All right, so once you've got it all wired up and mounted, don't tighten the screws all the way. What we're doing here is we're moving the cartridge up or down in this range of positions and that's going to make a big difference in the way that it tracks the record let's explain that for just a moment you're driving down a highway and your car is going straight straight down the highway okay right so it's all is, all is good if your car has something wrong and it's going down the highway cockeyed like this you're not going to be happy. All right. It's the same with uh, the turntable. What most people probably already understand, but I'll just explain it quickly, is that when records are cut, the, the cutting head goes straight across the record on a lathe. 
So there's no curvatures at all. It just goes straight across like a lathe. But when you play a record, I got my stylus cover on, so don't worry, I'm not doing damage anything. When this goes across, because there's a pivot, okay, it's going across in an arc, an arc like this, right? So somewhere on the record, it's going to be tracking cockeyed this way, and somewhere else, maybe near the end of the record, it's going to be traveling cockeyed this way because of the arc. Now, luckily, the turntable manufacturers have done us a big favor, and they've managed to you know, make the ge geometry between the spindle, the, the pivot point, and the stylus point such that this is minimalized, minimized, I'm sorry, and so it's minimal, but it's only minimal if you align the cartridge. So you've got the spindle of the turntable, you've got the pivot point of the tone arm. Those are already set. You can't move those on a regular turntable. The only part of it that you can change is the cartridge itself. And that's the third and final piece to the puzzle. That's your job. Now, here's how to do it. This is called a protractor. And I got it for free. And you can download these from vinylengine.com. Just sign up for an account. It's free. They don't bug you or anything. Don't worry about it. Just sign up and um, you can print these. Now, the first thing I have to mention to you is there's several different ones. I mean, I, I've got two here and I've got other ones that I sometimes use. There's, there, it's confusing. Um, just get the ones that look like this, okay? You're fine. Don't, don't worry about all these different ones they've got and different turn, tone arms. I mean, if you want to do the research and figure out what's best for your turntable, that's fine. But all in all, you can, guys, seriously, you can do this with a piece of paper and a ruler. You really don't even need these. I mean, it's so simple. But um, let me show you how to do it with one of these. So you print these out and be careful when you print them because they have to be at the right size. Um, so this particular set of protractors were on the same sheet, all one sheet of paper, and there was a line at the bottom that allowed you to measure after you printed it to make sure it was the right size. If it's not the right size, it ain't gonna work, okay? So print it properly. So I've got one here. These were laminated by a good friend of mine, and so we've got it all set to go. And what are we doing here? Well, you put this on. You can buy protractors for probably a lot of money. And if you're spending $35,000 on a tone arm, I guess you may as well spend another couple of thousand dollars on a protractor, but I, I'm not into that. So let's just do it this way, shall we? All right, guys, what you're looking at there is a thing of beauty because that is a perfectly aligned cartridge. I'm just going to zoom out for a moment here and just show you exactly what we're doing here. I'm using a protractor that I downloaded for free to properly align this cartridge. So there it is further into the record near the end. And as you can see, it's still perfectly aligned. Now, although you can see that as the tone arm moves across the surface of the record, you can obviously see that it creates an arc. Yet, I just showed you that here and here, it's absolutely perfectly aligned, even though there's an arc. Now, it took me some time to get that cartridge to be aligned up that well. So I'm reluctant to do this, but for the sake of you guys and learning how to do it, I'm going to misalign, purposely misalign this cartridge. Okay, and there. The cartridge is no longer aligned. And I'm pretty upset about this. So now I have to go through the process of properly aligning this cartridge again. Okay, we're going to start with the outer portion of the protractor and just carefully set the stylus down right in the middle of that cross. And you can see that it is aiming out slightly. Now, if I rotate carefully, rotate the turntable, you can get it to be straight, but that's telling me that that cartridge needs to be moved back in the head shell in order to line up with that cross properly. 
Let's have a look and see what it looks like on the inner portion of the protractor. Yeah, that's way off, as you can see. I, I, I don't even have to line it up properly to tell you that it, that's going to be way off. So let's move it back in the, in the head shell just a little bit. All right, so I've moved the cartridge back in the head shell a little bit, and you can see that on the outer part of the uh, protractor, it looks pretty straight. But now let's try the inner part. Well, now you can see that we are a little bit... We're not quite perfect here, and you know what? When it comes to the inner grooves of the record, this is the most crucial part of the whole system because this is where you're going to get the most distortion, and you do not want your cartridge to be tracking improperly at this point. So I need to readjust. All right, so I've moved it forward just a little bit, and you can see that it's on the outer grooves, it's, it's not bad. It's a little pointing outwards, but now we're going to check the inner groove. So it looks to me like we're still a little bit off, and it's very, very small. You can see it's pointing out a little bit towards the uh, outer edge of the record again, so um, let's try one more time. Now as you're doing this, you don't, you don't tighten the screws all the way, because you're just looking at being able to move it ever so slightly. Also, make sure that the cartridge is straight in the head shell. Don't, you don't want it to look like that, like it's on an angle like this. You don't want that, okay? You want it to be straight. So I'm going to move this forward just a little bit. It can be done if you take enough time and effort and patience. All right, so after fiddling with it for a bit, you can get it perfect. That's on the outer groove, and let's move over, and I'm going to do this in real time so that you guys can see I don't change anything. you got to move the platter just a bit and get it just right, and I'm going to zoom in and move the camera. This is real rough, guys. Just bear with me so that I can show you that this is not being done with any kind of camera trickery or anything like that. Okay, and we'll get it lined up just right on the uh, protractor. And I think that you can see that on both locations during the end and the beginning of the record, we have it just about perfect. And that you can achieve if you spend enough time at it. So these are called null points, these two. And if you can get them both exact, like I just did, you are aligned perfectly. Now, after all that, I want to show you how amazing this is and that you actually can do this with a simple piece of paper and a straight line. See, I'm at the beginning of the record. See, there's my turntable. It's lined up, and as I move it across and turn the platter around, because that's the geometry, you can see that it stays lined up all the way across. This is almost a linear tracking setup. No matter where on the record this is, I've got the stylus guard on so it doesn't ruin my... No matter where on the record it is, you can see that it's, it's completely tracking linearly. There you have it, folks. That's how you do it. So I spent quite a bit of time on that because that's one of the most important things you need to do to set up your turntable. And again, don't trust the manufacturer. So it's not a hard thing to do. People spend thousands of dollars on these protractors. I don't have to tell you my feeling on that. It's a waste of money, okay? This is almost a linear tracking system. Almost. It's quite close, and it's quite good. So that's all you got to do. Now, once you've done that, you need to go back and adjust your tracking force again because you've moved the cartridge in a slightly different location. That will affect the, you know, the, the balance, actually, 
of this system. So go back, rebalance your tone arm and set the tracking force the way you want it, what the, they recommend. And from there on, you're pretty much, you're pretty much set. Good luck guys and have fun with this. Listen, patience is number one. Take some time, get an evening where you got no interruptions, lots of space, lots of light, a couple of good magnifying glasses, and you will do this and your albums, your records, your vinyl will sound fantastic, I promise you. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So when I put out new videos, you'll get notified and you won't miss anything. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to put this turntable back where it belongs and I'm going to go listen to some vinyl because now I know that this thing is set up properly. Cheers, be safe and keep spinning those records. You know, vinyl is vinyl and that's all there is to it. Take care.